Hey guys, today it's time to review another really nice flashlight from Phoenix, the LR35R. It is quite compact but produces uh, 10,000 lumens with a maximum beam distance of about 500 meters. It comes with two 21700 batteries which 4000 milliamp each. They also have 5000 milliamp batteries. It's a shame that they don't include higher capacity batteries for such a flagship flashlight. The packaging is as we know, cardboard boxing, really nice with lots of information printed already on it. So maximum beam distance, peak beam intensity with 63,200 candela, impact resistant to drops of a height from 1 meter, waterproof to a depth of 2 meters, maximum runtime 80 hours in the echo mode with 50 lumen so it has no moon mode that's always a point that i criticize and the turbo with 10,000 lumen they indicate one hour 25 minutes but probably it will dim down after reaching a certain temperature we will check that out in the ulbrich ball later weight 200 39 grams excluding the two batteries and the size it's 140 millimeters long the header has a diameter of 51.5 millimeters and the tube has a diameter of 46.5 millimeters so i would say enough checking the box we will open it up So here's the flashlight with a nice holster. It's the same holster that they used with the FD65 that I often use for my underground photography. So it's easier and very securely installed with the Velcro strap. You have a, a back loop that is very strong and a hook if you want to attach something so pretty good holster there's an information sheet to take out the battery protection before the first use in this bag we will have a lanyard and probably spare o-rings only a lanyard with a nice phoenix sign User manual, warranty card, one spare o-ring and a little booklet uh, showing different nice flashlight models from Phoenix if ever you want to continue buying after you get a new flashlight. And then Phoenix branded USB-C cable for internal battery charging. So we will first open up the battery compartment to take out the battery protection. Plastic sheet. We have no springs here. So uh, that means that you need to use button top batteries. Phoenix always recommends to use their own batteries. If you want to use other batteries, you can buy flat top ones and put a magnet on top. I also already did it. That works also very good. Springs at the bottom. And here we have the 4000 milliamp 21700. I have also 5000 milliamp, so you get longer run times. Once the batteries are installed, the light is locked. This is indicated by the red LED blinking. Double click unlocks, another double click locks the light again, and then only the echo mode is blinking. So, flashlight unlocked, keep the button for one and a half seconds pushed will activate the strobe mode and if you want to cycle through echo low medium high and turbo you gotta just single click 
each time and the flashlight will cycle through the different modes. To turn off, it's about half a second. You can also lock the flashlight with a quarter turn of the battery compartment. So it's an easy operation. Somehow I would wish from Phoenix that they would uh, apply user interfaces uh, that are a little bit more um, developed like direct access to low, direct access to turbo, um, maybe stepless dimming without a rotary knob, but uh, this is pretty easy, pretty uh, forward going, so lots of people appreciate it, I get that. But would be cool if a few uh, lights would get different user interfaces to make it a little bit uh, more interesting. So we have a sturdy clip. Don't know if you're gonna clip this light uh, with this design anywhere, but still you have it. You can also remove it with the two screws. Here you can attach your lanyard. We have the USB-C cover. If you want to charge the batteries internally, they say it takes about uh, three and a half hours to charge the batteries. While charging, the indicator is red and once it's fully charged, it will turn into green. There's also a battery indicator in the uh, side switch. You just need to click it once and then you will see that it is... Uh, Red now, that means uh, that we have between 50 and 25% battery left. If it's green and constant on, it means 100 to 85%. And if it's flashing green, 85 to 50%. And as soon as it uh, starts blinking in red, you need to change the batteries because uh, you will only have between 25 and 1 percent left. It's also that uh, once the battery level starts dropping the light will always uh, go down one mode until you reach echo mode and then it's really time to change the batteries because otherwise you can uh, damage them by discharging them too low. They have a battery protection but it's still not recommended to completely drain the batteries. The light also has memory mode, so once the light is uh, turned on, and we cycle through the different modes, you go to the last used mode, so that's pretty nice. And it also has an overheat protection once it reaches uh, 65 degrees. Uh, it will uh, dim down and after the temperature goes down uh, the higher modes are available again. So that's pretty much everything for the user interface. Um, I have not said anything about the LEDs. It's, uh, as you can see, six LEDs that are sitting in a nice deep smooth reflector. It's six SST40 LEDs with around 6500 Kelvin. So also here would be cool if they offer it in neutral white. And then I think this is pretty much everything. I wanted to show you a size comparison to the TK35UE. In length the 35 is even a bit, uh, the TK35 is even a bit longer. So this is 5000 lumen compared to 10,000 lumen. It's not real big size difference but yet double the power. I prefer the innovative uh, mode selection on the TK35. It's cooler than just one single side switch. But this is a tactical light and this is a rescue light so that's why they have different uh, different designs. So. I will now fully charge the battery here and then we will measure it in my Ulbricht ball and then I'm going to show you what this beast looks outside in the forest so that you can have a better idea of the beam pattern. So to charge, plug it in, side switch will blink 
red and as soon as it's green we can measure it and test it outside. So guys we are outside now with the LR35R. It's fully charged and I measured the output in my Ulbricht ball. We are now in the 50 lumen mode which I measured with 60 lumen. I will dim one level up. It's the 450 lumen mode which I measured with 470 lumen, so a little bit more than indicated. 1200 lumen, which I measured with 1150 lumen. And then we go into the 3000 lumen mode, which I measured with 3100 lumen, also pretty accurate. And then the 10,000 lumen mode which I measured with 8500 lumen for the first five minutes. Then it dimmed down to 5500 lumen because it got really hot. And uh, after a few minutes it uh, ramped up again to 6700 lumen because it cooled down a bit. As mentioned uh, earlier, I want to show you a comparison to the TK35UE. This is the TK35 in the highest mode, 5000 lumen, compared to 10,000 lumen on the LR35R. So it's not a huge difference, but the eye needs more than double the amount of light to really notice it. So in my eyes, the TK35 is the clear winner of this battle. I also prefer the light color of the TK35. It's a little bit warmer than uh, the LR35, but that's up to you to decide which light color you like more. Overall, I'm happy with the light. I would just wish for a better user interface because I really don't like the strobe uh, being quite easily accessible uh, as soon as I keep the button pushed for too long it uh, activates the strobe in my eyes in a search and rescue flashlight you don't need the strobe uh, on instant access it would have been nice to have it available at a triple click or maybe a double click um, the electronic side switch is also very hard to find especially if you are in a harsh environment and you wear gloves it's not easy to uh, locate it and to turn the light on so maybe in a future iteration Phoenix can uh, update this and maybe uh, install a more uh, usable user interface like instant access to moon, uh, instant access to turbo and maybe a stepless uh, ramping of the different uh, levels then uh, pushing the button each time. Um, in my eyes it's a bit old school. It's an easy user interface but a flashlight in this price range could offer a little bit more. So I hope this uh, review answered all your questions. If there are any left, please don't hesitate and put them in the comment section. And as always, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for future reviews. Bye-bye.